1999 through 2006 Volkswagen Jetta with the 2.0 liter engine. We're going to replace the coolant housing on the back of the cylinder head that is leaking. And also we're going to call, replace the root cause of the problem, which is the, a oil leak caused by the valve cover gasket. So we will be replacing that also. I'm Brian Essick from How To Automotive, and I'm going to walk you through the steps of replacing those. We're going to get started by removing the top engine cover. So you're going to pull out the dipstick. And then once you got the dipstick pulled out, you're just going to grab the corners and lift straight up and pull straight towards you. So you can go ahead and reinstall the dipstick. And the next step is to remove the intake boot here. So you're going to pull the clamp and pull the boot off. And, and, uh, and then there's going to be a vent line right here. So you're going to squeeze the clamp and pull the vent line off. Them. There's also going to be a little electrical connector. And the easiest way to get these off is to push it inwards and then pull the little tab and pull the connector off. To recap, we're going to remove the clamp here, the clamp here, the electrical connector, the vent line here, the vent line here, and also there's going to be a vacuum line that goes right here. You're going to pull that all off and set aside. Then you can go ahead and unplug the uh, vent line here, and then we're going to remove the four mounting bolts that hold the throttle body on. We're not going to unplug the throttle body or disconnect any other hoses from it. Once you get it unbolted, we're just going to lower it down in this little area right here. The bolts are going to be eight millimeter triple squares. So go ahead and remove those four bolts. To speed this job up, I'm going to use my M12 um, Milwaukee cordless ratchet here. I will be linking up all the parts and tools that I use in this video in the description. That way if you're in, you see anything you're interested in, you can find it there. Once I'm bolted, you can just rest it out of your way like this. So the next step is to remove the brake booster vacuum hose here. There's going to be a little clamp on it that you're going to peel it open with a flat blade screwdriver. Or what I like to use is a pick tool like this or a hook tool. And then you slide it in between the clamp and you kind of give it a little twist and the clamp will pop open. Once you get the clamp open, you can go ahead and pull the hose off. Just above the timing cover here, there's going to be two vacuum hoses here and here. We're going to pull off. Now there's going to be a bolt in the back back here that we're going to remove. And then once you remove that bolt, you're going to come around the front and just where, behind where the throttle body was mounted, uh, there's a bracket, support bracket here. There's going to be another Allen bolt here that you're going to remove. Once you crack it free, you should be able to just reach your hand back there and just spin the bolt out. So now we're going to need a 5 millimeter deep Allen socket like this. And we're going to remove the bolt here, here, and here. And then right back here, through this little slot, we're going to slide the socket in, down here, and there's going to be an Allen bolt there. And that right here, we're going to slide it through here, and there's going to be an Allen bolt there to remove. And once you slide it through, if you look through the side like this, you can see the Allen bolts here. A little tip so you don't strip the Allen bolts out is to take a hammer and lightly tap the socket to make sure it's fully seated into the bolt. Once you get all the bolts removed, then you can just lift the intake up and off. Before we start removing the valve cover, I like to stuff rags into the ports of the uh, lower portion of the intake. That way nothing falls down inside. Now we need to pop the two clips that are on the timing cover here and pull the timing cover back a, a cup, an inch or so. Next, we need to remove the ignition wires from the little loom holders here. So go ahead and just pop those out. Now we can start removing the bolts on the valve cover and following them around. And then also in the front here, there's going to be a little wire loom that's held on. Um, the, and then after you get that unplugged, you can remove all the rest of them remain. So as you can see down here, the oil runs down and it gets behind the uh, coolant flange here. and causes the seal, uh, seal to swell and then creates a uh, coolant leak. So when I went to take off this little clip here in the front, it felt like it was going to break. So instead, I just went ahead and popped the clip open like that and pulled the wire out of the loom. Also towards the back of the valve cover here, there's going to be another little wire loom holder. So just go ahead and pop that out. So I'm going to take my little plastic hammer and lightly tap the side of the valve cover and that helps break the seal around the uh, valve cover and then you can pull it off. When you go to pull this cover off, you want to pull up equally on the both sides straight up and then the, the cover will come off. So you can lift the cover straight up and off and set aside. So my old gasket stuck to the cylinder head, so I'm going to peel it off. And then after I get it all peeled off, I'm going to double check that nothing fell inside the uh, cylinder head. And then we'll clean the mating surface all up with uh, using rags, scrapers, and brake clean. 
After cleaning up the cylinder head, the next step is to clean up the valve cover itself. So you give it a good pressure wash or throw it in your parts washer. Then we're gonna go ahead and install the new gasket. And this is the part I'm gonna be using here. Um, I will link this up in the description of the video. That way, if you guys need to pick it up, you can find it there. After installing the gasket back into the valve cover, you're gonna take a little bit of a black silicone and put it in the corners of the valve cover. I like to use the right stuff made by Permatex. I'll link this up in the description of the video. So we're going to put a little bit here in the, in the corners of the cam lobe here and then on the opposite side. Just a small little dollop is all you need. You don't need too much. So you put some here. And then we're going to go to the front of the uh, gasket here and, and put it here on the little cam lobe here and here. Now we're ready to lower the valve cover back over to the cylinder head. And you want to make sure that you hold the wiring harness and everything out of the way. And then lower it straight down until it seats. Before we bolt it up, what I'm going to do is take a dental mirror like this and a flashlight. And we're, I'm going to look around the complete uh, edge of the uh, valve cover here. And make sure that the gasket didn't fall in or slip out of its little, little uh, grooves. Just make sure everything is, is right before I bolt it up. Once I'm satisfied that the... Uh, the gasket is in the right position. So now I'm going to use a quarter inch ratchet and extension and I'm going to tighten the bolts down in a crisscross pattern. So I'll start here and I'll move over here. Then I'll move to here and tighten it down. Here, tighten it down. Then I'll move here in the corner, tighten it down. Then I'll go to the opposite corner, tighten it down straight across tighten it down and then back to the far opposite corner right here and tighten it down and I do it all by feel until it's all nice and snug now that it's tight you can go ahead and resecure the wire loom back into the little brackets here and here now you can go ahead and uh, resecure the timing cover and to squeeze it squeeze it and then pop the little clips on on both sides now you can go ahead and install the ignition wires back into the little mounting perches here and once that's done, we're going to go ahead and um, take our rags out, and then we're going to install our gasket. So before we install the gasket, you want to give it a wipe down. And then you can go ahead and install the, the gasket over the, over the ports like this. And then we're just going to lower the intake straight down and onto the port. And then we'll start the, uh, the 5 millimeter Allen bolts that went through it. Once you got it in position and go ahead and start the front three Allen bolts, we can go ahead and start the back ones. The way I like to do it is put a little mag put it on a magnet like this and reach around the back and then fish it into the hole. And then we use our socket to come over the top. And we'll do the same for the opposite side here. And I like to leave it all loose until all the bolts are started. And once they're all started, then you can torque them all down. Once you got all the bolts started, go ahead and run them down so they're snug. After you got them snugged up, you can torque them down. And I'm gonna start right here in the middle and I'm gonna use a, a, the Allen socket and torque it down to seven foot pounds. So I'll start there, torque it seven foot pounds, seven foot pounds, seven foot pounds, seven foot pounds, and then finally seven foot pounds. Now you can start the Allen bolt in the back here and here that supported the back of the uh, intake and tighten those down. Now you're ready to install the vent line here and here and put the clamps back on. Now we can install the brake booster vacuum hose. So you'll install it over the port. Now you have a choice where you can replace the clamp here with a screw type clamp, or you can reuse this if it's in good shape. And what you do is you just squeeze the clamp until the, this portion of it hooks over the top of the other half of it. My clamp was not cooperating with me, so I decided to replace it with a uh, screw clamp. I use the European style clamp. Now I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the little hoses back into the little catches here on the back of the intake here. Once that's secure, we're going to replace the throttle body gasket, reinstall the throttle body and bolt it down to seven and torque it down to seven foot pounds and then reinstall the vent line. Okay, now we're ready to start uh, taking the uh, coolant housing apart. Before we do that, we need to slide a coolant bucket underneath the vehicle. And once you got that done, we're going to start removing the coolant housing down here. I'm going to start by removing the clip here by putting a screwdriver in and twisting and pulling the horseshoe clip out and then we can pull the coolant temp sensor out of the housing like this 
and we're going to replace the the o-ring and stuff when we go to put it back in and i'll have a link for that in the description also so we're going to squeeze the clamp here and pull this hose off to get to these squeeze clamps i like to use this tool here specially designed for removing these clamps so this little end hooks around each end of the the hose clamp and then once you got them hooked around you squeeze the handle and it squeezes the clamp together and it'll hold it in place while you maneuver the hose clamp off the hoses i'll link up the tool in the description also get the hose clamp off if you use a pick tool like this to put in between the hoses and pry the uh, and slide it in between and and just kind of work the hose free it, it helps on getting these off they like to like glue themselves onto the housing so you just stick them in there like that and you just kind of just work it back and forth until you loosen the hose up and then you can pull the hose off. Before I remove any more hoses, I'm going to remove this fresh air inlet for the secondary air injection. You just squeeze the tabs like this and then pull straight up and off. Now we're going to remove this upper hose here. And to do that, uh, we're just going to squeeze the clamp and pull the clamp hose off. But we want to be very careful not to uh, put angle or put pressure on this vent line here it snaps off easily so we want to take this off with care now that the upper hose is off we're going to remove the hose directly below it off by squeezing the clamp and pulling it off now you're going to need a deep 10 millimeter socket and a, a little one to two inch extension like this and there's going to be a 10 millimeter bolt here and here that we're going to remove one's going to be a bolt one's going to be a nut after removing the two bolts there on the uh, coolant housing here what we're going to do is a uh, we're going to reach our hand back here and grab the metal pipe that runs over the housing and we're going to flex it up and the reason why we're going to flex it up is because it mounts over the ear of the uh, bracket here so you're going to flex it up and remove the bolt that has the stud on it once you get the stud removed you flex the pipe up and then you can pull the housing off now that we got the housing off you can see how the seal here is swollen has swollen from being in contact with the oil so we're going to install a brand new housing. I'll link it up in the description of the video. Before we install the new coolant housing, we need to clean up the mating surface here on the cylinder head. So I'm going to use a combination of brake clean like this made by Blaster and uh, rags, razor blades, and uh, scrape all the debris off. And so I'm going to give it a good, good washing down and wash all the old oil that has leaked down in here and, and make sure you get rid of all that oil residue so your new seal doesn't uh, swell up and leak now after getting the mating surface all cleaned up we're going to install our housing here and we're going to install when we go to install this we're going to install the bottom bolt here first and once that's started then we're going to place it in, and rotate it upwards and then start the top bolt when we rotate it it'll go up behind the bracket and you'll also have to flex that pipe out of our out of your way when you go to do this now that you got the bottom bolt start at first and kind of snug then you can just like i said you can kind of slowly twist the housing upwards into place and line up the bolt hole and at the same time you're going to reach around and flare that metal pipe out of your way and then stab the bolt through there like that so you'll line it up stab the bolt through and then tighten it up to get that bolt started you're definitely going to have to reach around the back and flare the pipe upwards like this now that you got both bolts started and tightened up, now you're going to take the pipe here and you're going to push it down over the stud and you're going to have to apply a little pressure on it and then you'll start the little nut and tighten, tighten the nut and pinch that pipe into place. Now I'm going to start the lowest hose here and start the clamp. If any of them are in bad shape, I recommend you replace those hoses now. After that, you can go ahead and put the, uh, the back hose on and then you can put the radiator hose on and start all the clamps then we're going to change out the o-ring on our uh, coolant temp sensor here it comes with the o-ring and the clip i'll link this up in the description of the video also after installing the o-ring onto the sensor like this i recommend you put a little grease on the uh, on the o-ring and then slide it into the housing and then you're going to take the horseshoe clip like this and you're going to line it up with the slots and just push it in until it locks and then give it a little tug to make sure everything's secure. Now you can go ahead and reinstall the fresh air inlet for the secondary air injection pump and it just slides over the port like this and you just push until you hear it click and you'll do the same thing for the other end that goes over the pump itself. Be careful not to break the pump mounts. Now you're ready to reinstall the air snorkel. 
you'll stab it over the throttle body, then you'll stab it on the mass air, start to clamp, start to clamp. Then you'll put the uh, vent line on here, put the vent line on here, and the, the hose on right here, and start all the clamps and plug in the electrical connector. Now I'm going to take a little bit of water and pour it on the top of the transmission here where all the coolant has leaked down and kind of give it a little bath and let it wash off into my little catch pan underneath the vehicle. Try not to get any water on the coil pack here that can cause misfires. Now you can go ahead and install the top engine cover so it's going to stab over the little rubber grommet here. You push it on and then you push it on over the dipstick like this and just push it straight down until it locks into place. Now you can fill up the coolant reservoir bottle here with Volkswagen approved coolant. And once you got it full to the full mark, you're going to run the vehicle and you're going to run it until the thermostat opens up. And then you're going to recheck the coolant mark. To check the thermostat, I like to use my little infrared gun here. And right below the alternator is the lower hose. And that's where the uh, thermostat is, is connected to this hose. So you'll run it until you'll see a, a drastic temperature increase in that lower hose. It'll jump up about 30 to 40 degrees once the thermostat is open. Then the coolant level may drop in the reservoir. You may have to adjust your coolant level. And that'll complete the job of replacing the valve cover gasket and the coolant housing on the back of the cylinder head. On a 1999 through 2006 Volkswagen Jetta with a 2.0 liter engine. I'm Brian Essa from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos. Encourage you to subscribe and also to remind you that I will be linking up all the parts and tools that I use in this video in the description. So look for it there. Thank you again for watching.